Hello, everybody. This is Francesco Rulli. I'm the CEO of Querlo. I'm also the um, digital uh, director and officer of the Opera di Santa Maria del Fiore, that is the Duomo of Florence. Uh, I'm here today with Anna Weinstein, who is uh, a cultural entrepreneur. So, Anna, if you can share with us a little bit more uh, light and information about your work and uh, what uh, is part of your um, uh, job of, as a cultural entrepreneur. Thank you, Francesco. So what I understand as being a cultural entrepreneur is somebody who develops uh, novel creative collaborations in the arts. I co-founded and run a nonprofit organization called the Ballet Russe Arts Initiative, which is inspired by the example of the Degulev Ballet Russe to connect uh, people across cultures, across art forms, in uh, fostering both new creativity and a deeper understanding of past cultural activity. So I'm myself a trained artist, uh, a trained economist, and a trained art historian. Uh, and I try to bring the, all those hats to the table, both as somebody who presents and curates cultural experiences, but also as somebody who also continues to write uh, scholarly works of history, uh, both cultural and uh, social. Very interesting. So, um, as you know, the Florence Cathedral Museum has started development of the artificial intelligence of Michelangelo. So we have been taking the technology that the most companies and organizations use for customer service or for uh, communication with clients and we're transforming to a cultural um, tool to communicate and have a, a real interaction between people and the knowledge base we have today available for this artist, Michelangelo. So what are your thoughts about the role of artificial intelligence in, in the cultural space that you work within? So I think that AI is a really fascinating opportunity as a tool for creative expression. Um, particularly, I think there's a number of examples of uh, creative kind of ensembles and individuals using AI to produce new work. Now, I still view it as something that can be a tool in the right artists and technologists hands and in a way it's a tool that is even harder to leverage effectively because you both need to have a really interesting creative understanding and conceptual framework uh, aesthetically and at the same time to have a knowledge of the tools and what they can really do uh, so What's, what makes it challenging is that sometimes you have people who understand the realm of art very well um, and, and others who understand the realm of technology very well, but uh, you know, they may not know how to code, for example, to really effectively leverage what the underlying um, opportunities are. And the technologists, they kind of, they have some understanding of what art is, but maybe it's not nuanced enough to get the richness out of uh, out of what's possible, but at the same time, it's a tool that is being refined and developed, and there's a lot of exper interesting experimentation that's leading in promising directions. Now, you know, I think in a in our very technological time, uh, it's an important asset uh, in the toolkit of possibilities that doesn't take away from all the traditional techniques and, and tools. Um, and it's just yet one more arrow in the quiver of the artist. Um, but because it does require a huge amount of knowledge and sophistication and training, uh, I think it, we're sort of only at this infancy, certainly. Exactly. So I can share with you a brief thing about the experience of with building the artificial intelligence of Michelangelo. We started with less than 100 intents meaning topics that he can talk about. And because we collected over 35,000 um, questions, we were able to expand his capacity to talk about uh, over 400 uh, intense uh, topics, okay? So we have seen that if we can arrive actually to over 2,000 intense, it's almost uh, the opportunity to replicate a real person, all right? And some of those questions we collected were very unexpected questions about his personal life. Things that sometimes many different scholars of his life didn't really discuss in depth, like his sexual orientation, 
uh, what he likes to eat, what he likes to wear as clothes and so on. So artificial intelligence is also a very good tool, intimate tool to establish this conversation, collect the data sets of what are the questions people care about, and then do further research on that. So um, uh, do you have some examples in your, in your career where you have seen uh, in artificial intelligence being used or do you believe uh, we are at the infancy and that there is a lot of potential and uh, nothing is yet as compelling as you would like it to be? Well, so I recently came across a fascinating uh, um, project. Uh, so Google has an AI group uh, that is collaborating with artists uh, and they worked with the choreographer, Bill T. Jones on, a, on what I thought was a fascinating project. And uh, Bill is, uh, you know, he was coming very much from his uh, kind of uh, world, uh, but he was working in terms of the Google scientists who, who, who worked with him in this series of workshops. Um, there were amongst those coders and technologists, uh, at least one person, if not multiple, who had also dance training. And what was fascinating is to read about and watch some footage of how they sort of exchanged ideas and how they iterated ideas. So that creative conversation led to some, some I thought, quite intriguing works. And what, in some ways, um, the choreographer focused, let's say the technology could do all sorts of different things. He, tend, he seemed to focus on like certain very specific things it could do, and then sort of push the envelope of how that could relate to, to human movement. Uh, and uh, came out with some, I think, visually, aesthetically, and emotionally sort of powerful uh, movement experiences. Um, so what was interesting is that I didn't seem like he had a very strong understanding, let's say, of code, but by asking persistent questions and really sort of in a way honing in on what to him were the most in intriguing uh, and stimulating opportunities that the AI offered, uh, he was able to, through a sequence of workshops, through rounds of refinement, come out with something that I thought was really quite novel and was not possible without AI. Very interesting, very interesting, Anna. And um, now, if people want to learn more about your work, what's the best way to reach out to you or to learn more? Well, I'm uh, definitely always open to people reaching out on LinkedIn. So that's a great way. And in terms of learning about what I do through Ballet Russe Arts Initiative, our website, ballerus.com, is a great resource for our ongoing programming and projects. Fantastic. So Thank you for your uh, contribute and I will reach out to you uh, for talking about NFTs and the role of art in the metaverse. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks, Francesco.